Hey, it's so good to be with you. It's going to be a great day and uh, it's going to be a great year. Uh, you know, it's interesting as we move through this year and here we are just on the fifth day of it. It's interesting to see the highs, the lows, the good, the bad, uh, where people's states of mind are, uh, where their energies are flowing, uh, the act actions, the activity that they're taking, uh, the decisions that they're making, uh, the things that they're just doing overall. And I say interesting because you know as well as anybody that you watch people take choices in their life and you know whether they are spot on and you are so clear when they are spot off. But the reality is, is that for each one of us, we're making choices every single day. And sometimes we aren't too conscious of the very choices that we're making every day. We become really almost very focused on what others are doing, but forget the fact that we're making choices every day. And sometimes those choices are very conscious and sometimes they're very unconscious. There are things that we do from the very standpoint of how conscious are you when you're driving down the road, the light turns green or red or red, I should say, and you stop, but you're not necessarily even thinking. It was just an automatic response. So I want you to think about just the responses that you have today, the responses that you're taking in regards to the market, in regards to your circumstances, in regards to uh, anything that's going on in your life, right? right? Right now, we've got a number of people, right? They're dealing not only personally or within their family with COVID. What's your response? You have challenge, events that are occurring in regards to this business, uh, what deals that are coming together, deals that aren't. Uh, you have the events of working with possibly multiple buyers, and those buyers are oftentimes hard to get in a contract with such a competitive market. You have times and events where a deal explodes and implodes and doesn't come together. Think about how you're responding in each and every way of your life. And the better question is to first say, okay, how am I responding? But the better question is, is this, is my response serving me? Is it really giving me the life that I desire? My absolute observation in our lives, in anyone's life, my own and others, is this. You are going to have what W. Clement Stone used to talk about. He would say that events are always going to occur and that there will always be a response or some level of a reaction. Now, people will try to you know, divide the response and react, but let's just say response today. And then they will produce an outcome from that. So most importantly, what W. Clement Stone would talk about in his book back in the early 1950s and 60s, he would speak to this, the fact that events are going to always occur. Problems will always happen. Disappointments will always be there. There will always be tragedy. There will always be heartbreak. There will always be things that don't happen, maybe the way that you saw them happening, the way they should have been happening. And what he was trying to teach is that, look, events will always occur, the good and the bad, the beautiful moments and the heartbreaking moments. The question is, is how will you respond? How will you respond to those most difficult moments or even the best moments? Will your ego get out of control because great things are happening? Or will you be so heartbroken that you can't even function with things that are going on in your life? Each one of us First and foremost, and, and I have to tell you that you know, I, was, I was working on this and studying this this last weekend, and I wrote down these words. I wrote down, every day I have a choice. I want you to write that down. Every day I have a choice. See, you can respond however you choose to. Now, I have people when I will confront them, talk to them about the challenges specifically that are going on in their life, they'll say things like, well, I'll say, Remember, you always have a choice. And they'll say things like, boy, I'm, I'm so tired though. I don't wanna manufacture a better response or I'm, I'm heartbroken or I'm hurting or I'm so disappointed or I'm so sad or I'm so overwhelmed or I, I, don't, I, I can't see clearly, I, I can't see a better vision. I, 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 is it ever going to work out? Is it ever going to happen the way I want it to? And those are ways in which you can respond. And I want you to really think about that. Some of you will say to me right now and go, well, yeah, but George, you don't understand my situation. No, I, I do. You know, each one of us, I mean, my heavens, in the last, the last 120 days, I've had a massive concussion. In the last 120 days, I've had a major neck surgery with an artificial disc two weeks ago put into my neck because I couldn't even feel my right arm. 
the, the, the fact is, is that we're all going to have major challenges and disappointments and frustrations and discouragement that goes on in our lives. But the ultimate decision as to how fast or how soon we get out of that is always based on a choice. It's always based on a choice. So the thing is, is that for each one of us, as we move through the year of 2021, I promise you, some of you are going to have moments where you are absolutely so happy and you are so thrilled with what's going on in an area or every area of your life. And there will unquestionably be moments of disappointment in relationships, moments of disappointment in your health and your frustration with it, moments of disappointment in regards to your business. The ultimate game here is not the fact, can you sell a piece of real estate? The ultimate game here is, can you win the game of your own mind? Because if you can win the battle of your mind, and the way in which you choose to respond, from a key, key word here, choose to respond, is that you will conquer any and every area of your life. I can promise you that. So what's the story that you're telling yourself? What's the message that's going on as you respond? So first thing, write that down if you haven't already. I have a choice every day. I have a choice every single day. Now, you may not want to choose a different path, a different response, a different action, a different uh, goal or a different objective or a different activity or a different discipline, but you have to acknowledge within yourself that you are responsible for the choices that you make in your life. The way in which you respond, you may not have had choice on the events that occurred, right? No one on this call created COVID. No one created it that's on this call, all right? However it came about, you didn't create it. That's the event as an example. But how you choose to respond to it is entirely up to you. It is entirely up to you. How you decide to respond when a deal isn't going your way is entirely up to you. How you choose to respond when you're disappointed and discouraged and heartbroken in a relationship is that it is your decision. It is your choice to how you respond. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't feel the hurt. You don't feel the disappointment. The question is, whether it be relationships, your health, or your business, how long will you allow yourself to respond in a way that does not serve you or your future? Guys, the, the, the secret I really believe to an extraordinary life in regards to the joy that you see so many people have is the way in which they choose to respond to the events that go on in their life. And there is no question that we are fragile creatures. There is no question that we have moments of deep disappointment. There is no question that we can often be highly frustrated by the things that are going on around us. There's from the moments of anger to disappointment, sadness to bliss, and it goes all the way around and circles sometimes within minutes to hours to days, or sometimes a good year, and then there's a bad year. But the way you respond, the way you respond is the most important ingredient. I would just want to give you perspective, right? In the last four months, major concussion, last four months, major neck surgery, in the first 18 months of building Everest. I just want to give you perspective. I had knee surgery, heart surgery. I had uh, two eye surgeries. I had a staph infection that almost killed me. I had uh, a, uh, 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 I had a moment where I almost choked to death. I mean, I can give you all these answers, all these, and everyone could say, oh my gosh, George, you're totally excused. Now that I'm not going to say it like that. They're going to say, you are so excused from having to perform, to how to succeed, to moving your company forward. You're off the hook, it's no big deal. You've had so much coming at you, I totally get it. And people will put their arm around you and say you are justified in the response of discouragement and justified in your sadness, justified in how are you gonna move forward? How are you gonna make it happen? You can respond in so many different ways and people will justify and put their arms around you, give you empathy, compassion, sympathy for everything that's going bad and wrong. And I'm not here to say that that shouldn't be their response. 
But what I am saying is that your response is what is most important. Important. How you choose, key word here, how you choose to respond is the difference as to whether you will have success as probably you have outlined it and deemed it or not. So do not underestimate that when you don't set that appointment today or when that deal goes sideways or when the, the listing maybe isn't taken or the buyer chooses not to buy, whatever, whatever happens, remember that you have a choice to respond in this business. You have a, a choice to respond in your life to every good or bad thing that goes on. So as you start 2021, your second official business day, Take a declaration for yourself that I, I mean, say this, year, I am responsible and I have a choice. No one can take responsibility for your outcome. No one can take responsibility for where you're taking your life. No one can take responsibility for the success economically, the relationship and the health that you want to have and the well-being in your life. No one can ultimately take responsibility for that except you. And that's the beauty of it. Not only are you responsible, not only do you have control of you, but now you have control and responsibility to respond in a way that will serve you. Now look, if the way that you're responding is perfectly serving you, then keep doing it. If your desire is to be depressed, sad, if your desire is to be discouraged, if your desire is to not to, you know, to feel high levels of anxiety and, and sadness, that's your choice. You may say, well, no, George, what are you talking about? How can you say that? There's things that are happening, but it's still a choice. It's still your choice to absorb all of that, hold on to it, not let it go. And it is still a choice, whether it is, again, it is the disappointment of a transaction the disappointment of something in a day, a week, a month, a quarter, a year, or even within your life, your lifetime, it is still your choice. The single most important ingredient I can tell you, I believe is success, is what fuels disciplines, it fuels the right mindset, it fuels the right activity, it fuels your desire to get better, it fuels your desire to improve your skill sets, it is to recognize that every single day you have a choice and a responsibility within yourself that no one else can take from you to choose your response, to choose what you believe is the answer. So what will you choose? And will it be a choice that serves you? Second point, and that is this. I wrote down what meaning, what meaning, M-E-A-N-I-N-G, what meaning will you give things? I want you to think about that for a moment. Let's combine these two principles. I have a choice. Number two, what meaning do I choose to give things? The means that you give things are so interesting to me because they come from your culture. They come from your upbringing. They come from your family. They come from your uh, friends. They come from habits. They come from the ways in which you've done things the way in which you put meaning behind anything. I want you to think about that. The way in which you put meaning behind things. I want, you to, I want, I want, I want to go back 28 years ago nearly, and my, as a newlywed. This March, I will have been married 28 years. And I remember in the early years, when in my early 20s, 21 or 22, and I can remember that as the clothes were piling up and we were in our little apartment and I remember I was so angry because I had this meaning that I had given something that was this Jennifer was folding a shirt of mine and she didn't fold it right this is how silly this stuff is guys and how crazy we can get but she and maybe you can relate this but she legitimately was not even folding today. I can't even imagine saying anything about this. In fact, we were talking about this recently, but I said, can you remember when I was so obsessed with how a shirt had to be folded? But what it really meant was if you didn't fold it, now think about this, if you didn't fold it this way, well, then that means you didn't really love me. 
what? Whoa, whoa. Meaning if you didn't fold my shirt a different way or a certain way, that means the meaning I gave it, well, so that means you probably don't love me. Now, anyone who's listening to that was thinking that should be considered absolutely ridiculous. And it was. But early on as a young man, 21 years old, I didn't have any concept as to even the even the the understanding or the consciousness, the mindfulness, the awakening, knowing that, wait a second, here, what meaning am I putting behind things? If someone doesn't open the door for you, what meaning do you put towards it? If they don't greet you and say hello in your life, what meaning do you give it? If someone's doing more business than you, what meaning do you put behind that? If you see someone insanely rich, what meaning do you put behind that? What meaning do you put behind any and everything? Again, goes back to point number one. It is the choice that you choose. If you get conscious, aware, mindful, an awakening, that's what begins to happen. And you begin to live a life that is truly extraordinary because you become alive. You wake up. You begin to realize, wait a second, what's the meaning that I'm putting behind this? When someone does that, what does that mean to me? It just means that she folded the shirt the different way. It doesn't mean that she doesn't love me. But I want you to really think about that. What meaning are you putting behind things that is not making sense? What meaning are you putting behind things that isn't serving you? What meaning are you putting behind things that is so absolutely suffocating and destructive to your future and to your business, to your life, to your relationships, to your health? What meaning are you putting things, putting behind things? Someone says something, how do you respond within regards to your health? If you respond in a way that serves you, it's great. How are you responding in regards to all of a sudden you have a bad deal, a bad day? Does that mean you don't get, don't prospect tomorrow? Does that mean you don't knock a door? Does that mean you don't call your sphere? Does that mean you don't call your leads? I don't know. It's only up to you. That's the thing about this life that you have. You get the choice to respond. You get the choice to put whatever meaning you choose behind anything that goes on in your life. So here's my, my challenge to you. I'm almost done with this little journal that I've got here, guys, from, from last year. And I can just tell you that the majority of this journal, that as I flip through the pages and I look at it right now, I can see that what I'm really trying to do is I am trying to master a better story. So as we wrap up today, I want you to just think about this for a moment. What's the story that you're telling yourself for your life? If you are ultimately responsible for the responses that you give, meaning the choices that you make, and then the meaning that you give things, if you are ultimately responsible for that, then in the end, ask yourself that question. Is this serving me? And if it's serving me, great. If it's not, what's the new story that you're going to tell yourself? Now, some of you will say, well, wait, I, I, if I tell myself this story, I don't even know if that story is true or not. Um, here's an interesting fact. Most of the fears you have, most of the stories you tell yourself, most of the things that you're saying aren't true anyway. So what if you manufactured a better story? What if you manufactured a better message to yourself? So I want to just close up here today with just a few statements that I think will serve you. I think that they are ones that have had profound impact on me that have helped me reshape a better life. And the reason it's a better life is because I get a better response, because I take better or, or more responsibility in my life, because I'm able to predict a better outcome. Guys, there is nothing in this business that you cannot do. There is nothing in this business you cannot learn. So when you see those who are having extraordinary success, ask yourself that question. How are they responding differently than me? What is the meaning they're putting behind things when things go sideways, right? When a productive agent has a deal fall through, oftentimes they don't think much of it. 
When a non-productive agent who only has maybe one deal going, they get really freaked out. And when they say, and the person who has a lot of deals says, man, you can't respond that way. And they'll say things like, well, that's easy for you to say, you have lots of business. No, they were responding that way when there wasn't lots of business, meaning they were responding in a beautiful way that served them, a beautiful way that gave a better meaning for them to go get the next deal. So look, again, you are the responsible party. You have a choice. You have a choice of the meaning you give. And I want to just give just a few things that I think might help you when those moments of disappointment, discouragement, the unfortunate things that occur in our lives, the challenges of health, relationships, and business, they will happen. It is an absolute guarantee this year that you will be disappointed at moments. It's a guarantee. It's called life. And there will be moments where you are blissfully happy. And that is a reality too. So how are you going to then maneuver in the moments of discouragement, moments of distraction, the moments when the day didn't work out the way you want it to? What's going to be the story? What's going to be the response? What's the meaning that you're going to give that? So here you go. Here's just a couple of things. First one, you've heard it from me before. Byron Katie said it first. If you're uh, familiar with her, she has great reads in regards to relationships. And this is one of her statements. And others have picked it up. Tony Robbins says it and others. But Byron Katie is, I think, I believe the first to have said it, at least in written form, many, many, many years ago. And this is what she said. Life is happening for me, comma, dot, dot, dot. Life is happening for me, not to me. I want you to really think about that for a moment. Every disappointment, every failure, every discouraging act, everything that you say is unfair. Could you change the messaging? Could you change the story? The day that you make 30 contacts and you don't make any appointments, the moment the listing doesn't sell and it expires, or the moment that the seller says, I'm taking the home off the market, your buyer puts an offer in, it doesn't get accepted. The lead says, stop calling me, or you can't get a hold of anybody, it seems like today in your business. Maybe a relationship implodes, explodes, is just gone sideways beyond measure. Maybe your health is so sideways, you don't even know how to think straight. But what's the message in the story you're going to serve yourself with? For me, that one right there, that life is happening for me, not to me. And then I want you to add something that I have added over these years, dot, 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 or comma. What am I supposed to learn from this? I know there's a message that I'm supposed to learn in that moment of disappointment. What am I supposed to learn? Life is happening for me. It's not happening to me. No one's trying to punish me. Okay, what am I supposed to learn from that? And that is so much what this little or big journal, what do you want to call it? That's what is in my journal. It's typically responding in a way that serves me and brings light and beauty and joy and possibility to my life. So can you say that? Can you say that life is happening for me, not to me? And what am I supposed to learn from this? Now you can follow it up with, I'm tired, I'm discouraged still. You can respond that way. Or you can respond with another statement I've often made is that when one door closes, there's always another one that is opening for me. Guys, I'm here to tell you that if you will take control of the meaning, the choices, the responsibility, and the story that you're telling yourself, you will have an extraordinary year. You will look back on all the moments of discouragement and go, man, I learned so much. Weren't those great times? You will look back on the moments where you were most happy and had such success and you will be so grateful and your life will shower. Your life will shower like a rainstorm hurricane of gratitude and joy because of it. All right. Now, one last thing. We got about three minutes. Here we go. I just want to encourage you that remembering, I mean, look, I know I'm a broken record at this little statement, 
but gratitude is the antidote to all fear. When you wake up in the morning and you feel the anxiety, some people think, well, George, you probably never feel. I felt anxious this morning when I woke up. What did I do? I sat on the edge of my bed. I sat up and I went through about 20 different things I'm grateful for. When I walked out of my garage this morning, I looked up to the sky and I said those words that often you've heard me say, today, who's the one person I'm going to find? Because I'm going to make a difference today to someone. Because I can't imagine moving through the day not doing so. That's my story. That's my responsibility. That's my choice. But I do know that as I set my course and I drive it with a ton of gratitude, the story gets better. The story gets better. So whenever you feel the fear, the anxiety, the depression seeping, seeping in, whenever you feel the discouragement of the business or a relationship or something with your health, and it seems like it's never ending, you have to take the time. If you want to remain in a beautiful state, if you want to feel joy, if you choose to be happy, it will get there faster if you choose to get it because you remain grateful. Gratitude is the antidote to all fear. Gratitude is the element that brings joy, light, happiness, freedom, peace to your life. Do not forget about it. So as we embark on 2021, I challenge you to be responsible. Take responsibility. Limit the media out of your life. Limit the amount of social media in your life. Limit the news stations out of your life. Take control of your life. Don't let the outside penetrate the meanings that you give things. Penetrate the, the way in which you think, the way in which you respond. Let it be something that's very internal. Protect your mind. It is one of your greatest assets. Protect it from negative people. Protect it from the media. Protect it from the sensationalizing of everything out there. Protect it from the news stations that will tell you what you're supposed to think and what you're not supposed to think. There is so much out there that you can control that I can promise you that if in 2021 you control the things you can, you'll have a beautiful, amazing, exceptional, off the chart, amazing year. That is what will happen if you take responsibility, if you make sure you recognize a declaration, I get to choose. You have a choice in this. And you have a choice to put whatever meaning behind the emotion, whatever you want to put behind anything. And now you have the right to craft, to rewrite, to mastering a better story, to mastering the game of your life. That's where you get to go. So now I wrote down here, even on my pages, goals, plans, schedules, easy. Accountable, you'll be accountable because you rewrote a better story because you want a more beautiful life economically, financially in this business. You want a better life in the, the sweetness and the tenderness of your most important relationships. And you want a better life when it comes to whether or not you can you know, maybe run up and down a flight of stairs without getting winded or to be in the best shape of your life. All of these are factors for you to shaping a better story. It's not just about real estate. It's not just about selling one more home. You have figured out that, that, that not only Everest, myself, and this entire company cares far more about just whether you sell a house, that one house or more that you sell is just a byproduct of who you've become. And now in closing, we're out of time. If you want to earn more, if you want to do more, if you want to achieve more, if you want to truly have more of whatever it is in your life, you have to recognize, you have to recognize and take action towards it that you are the difference maker in that. As you become more, you begin to earn more, become more as a leader, more as a communicator, more as a salesperson, more in regards to how you go about this business. The automatic is an increase in business. So you can focus on money and say, okay, I've got the money, now I'm successful. Or you can be wise and recognize that as I become successful, the money will show. The money shows up after your success. The money is not what made you successful. That's, that's backwards. You are a success 
the deals show up. You're a success, the money shows up. You're a success, the relationships show up. You're a success, the health shows up. It's the success, the champion you become before everyone goes, oh, wow, look how successful they are. You're a success before you got healthy and thin. You're a success before you got more money in your account. You were success well before people go, wow, what a great relationship those two people have. You were successful well before that because the byproduct of your success is the rewards and other things that I've mentioned. Okay, know how much we care for you. Know how grateful we are for you. Thank you for being with me today. Let's have a great 2021. Let's finish up strong with some affirmations. Guys, I'd encourage you to stand up. I'll never ask you to do something I'm not doing myself. This is something I've done for nearly 25 years, these affirmations.